We'd like to thank the following sponsors of the North Carolina Museum of History Foundation for helping to make this event possible. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, all of our educators, all of our virtual, our students, and any visiting public here with us today for our session number seven at our 25th annual American Indian Heritage Celebration here in Raleigh, North Carolina at the North Carolina Museum of History. Again, we just thank the museum here for a wonderful venue that they provided for us to celebrate and to share our heritage and our culture here this weekend during National Native American Heritage Month for all of our Native people across the United States, and especially here in North Carolina for Indian Heritage Month here. So again, thank you for that. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be sharing our culture and all of our activities here during dance and song. And we'll be showcasing our dancers here today in a grand entry and also in our personal exhibitions and specific exhibitions for each of those dancers. So before we go into this grand entry, tell you a little bit about our grand entry. It's where we showcase all of our dancers as we bring them into the circle. And we showcase their dance styles no matter what tribal affiliation that they may be. We showcase those dancers and honor them. We honor our elders and our flags. We honor our young people. We honor those that have fallen before and have not been with us in, since the past. And we honor those and the young people of the future. We bring in all of our young people there, and we honor those during our grand entries. And again, ladies and gentlemen, we've been coming in with a grand entry here today. Our dancers will be keeping a COVID posture, so you'll see our dancers dance and they'll be in a spotlight format to make sure that we keep our six-foot distancing and following all of our COVID protocols that are set in place here at the North Carolina Museum of History. So to no further ado, I'm going to ask Southern Sun, one of our drum groups here with us today, our Southern Brothers, to bring us out a good grand entry for our dancers. Grand entry.
right. Thank you, dancers. Ladies, jingle, stay with me here. All right. We'll be calling out our next set of exhibition is here for our ladies jingle we'll be calling them out so make your way out ladies and we'll keep our COVID distance in here we've got some areas marked here on the floor there to keep our six foot distancing for our COVID response so again ladies and gentlemen as we describe these ladies this style of dance and getting ready for a good song these ladies are known as the healing dancers and the story goes of the healing up around the Great Lakes area and the Ojibwe nations and some of the southern Canadian areas there up around in those Great Lakes of the time of the past when the tribes wasn't doing very well. And the story came about the young lady who created the dress and danced the style of the dance of the jingle dress or known as the healing dance. And then years ago before we moved into the snuff can lids here that we take and roll those one individually each one at a time to adorn these dresses these young ladies used you know, all the different types of hooves and different types of shells that they found on the lake sides and up around the, the waterways there in the rivers and the spa. so as you see these ladies and you hear them dance listen to the sound of the jingles as it sounds like the mother earth the rain falling upon mother earth replenishing the land bringing back the plants and the animals and sustaining the native people back in those generations beyond before we as native people realized that the troubles that we would be facing in these times here so again we thank the creator for sustaining us and keeping us through all of those times and creating this style of dance and today we still utilize this style of dance for healing these young ladies will remove all of their feathers and their headgear, their fans, and they will come out and dance in honor of those that need healing or those that require some type of special healing from the Creator. So again, we thank these ladies here, and we're going to ask Stony Creek to give us an appropriate exhibition song. Ladies Jingo. Let's hear it for our ladies' jingle. Good dancing there, ladies. Good exhibition. Good song from Stony Creek. Guys, I tell you what, during our powwows and our contests, these guys really show off, and all these dancers 
and they're doing a wonderful job here today for their exhibitions as we are performing here at the 25th Annual American Indian Heritage Celebration here in Raleigh at the North Carolina Museum of History. Again, we want to be calling some of our dancers out. I'm going to call a young lady out. Come on out. Our ladies fancy, our ladies fancy shawl dancer. I'll ask her to step right over here. We'll keep a good social distance here. And it's good, good Miss Simone McBride from the Wakamasuan Nation. And I tell you what, Simone, being a tribal member, along with myself from the Wakamasuan Nation, very proud of watching her grow, not only as a young lady, but in her style of dance and what it has brought to her and her family. So she does a wonderful job. Her parents have done wonderful, and her grandparents, of really raising her and bringing her through the Native traditions. And she is one of our future leaders in Waccamaw land down there, so we sure appreciate her. As we look at her regalia and, and the beautiful designs that she has here, as you notice the lady's fancy shawl, the shawls across her back, where the ladies traditional, you'll see in another segment, had the shawl across their forearm. Well, these ladies didn't want to dance that style of dance, so the ladies traditional, they wanted a faster pace, a younger style of dance. So they went there and they created this fancy shawl dancing, also known as the butterfly dance. And this style of dance, as you see them dance, it looks like butterflies bouncing across the top of a, fly, of a flower of field, excuse me, a field of flowers as they're pollinating those flowers. So beautiful style there. As you look upon and the beadwork and all the yoke and the various things that she has there and all of her adornments on her regalia, you notice that the bone work there, depicting the eastern woodland style, that she dances and incorporating her heritage there with Eastern Woodlands and the beautiful beadwork that you see. Now you'll see this style of dance all across the United States known as the Pan American dance where they dance this lady's fancy shawl in multiple tribes and multiple locations of all the 574 fairly recognized tribes in the United States. So wonderful job these ladies do. And I tell you what, they're very acrobatic. They're very aerobic. These ladies are can really do a lot of high spins. She might not do many today. She's saving them for contests, but I tell you, they do a wonderful job. So we're going to ask Southern Sun, if you would, to give us an appropriate exhibition for Lady Shaw. Take it away, singers. Let's give a big round of applause to our ladies fancy. I tell you, these ladies doing a wonderful job, and we thank them for that. And I tell you, she does a wonderful, wonderful style. And uh, good to see them ready for powwows to come back, getting ready for next year. Hopefully, we'll be back at our gatherings, and we can see multiple dancers as these ladies here. And I see some guys doing a good round of applause there. That's awesome. All right, guys, we've got another round of exhibitions here from our Eastern Woodlands. You guys make your way on out. Our Eastern Woodland dancers, does she have a partner there with you? Let's grab his lady friend, his partner there, if you would, and tell her to come on out, Mr. Richardson. Yes, sir, we've got a, a young lady back here also with our Eastern Woodland style. 
And we'll see. We'll make it. There she comes. She's getting all geared up and ready to go. I'll get out your way here. So just to talk a little bit about this Eastern Woodland style, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see this style of dress all the way from the Mississippi Valley, all in through the Ohio Valley, eastward, all the way up into Canada and down as far as the South Carolina and Georgia areas and all of those stuff, but mostly predominantly still up in the East Coast in the Delaware State, up around Virginia and up into New York and all of those areas there and uh, in the southern parts of the Hudson. So a guy to see these style of dance still prominent in that area. It wasn't as prominent in North Carolina as it used to be back in the generations before settlers and before European um, occupation here. But I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, it has been re revitalized and it's coming back because of two young people like here, Mr. Kay Little Turtle to my left and Miss Chelsea Graham here to my right. It is really coming back and, and, and bringing back that heritage of the Eastern style, and we're glad to see that. It's called the style of dance, and the song is the Escogne, and it's the social style of dance, and it's also dance that tells many, many stories. So when the settlers, excuse me, when the villagers would go from tribe to tribe, a group of dancers would come, and they would have these social dances with each other, and as they would greet each other, and they would tell stories through that. And Kaya can tell you about the different types of longhouse dances that they had amongst all the people. We have a, a, a good artisan here, and also we have very many artisans in the, in the United States, and especially in North Carolina, that is very accustomed to this Eastern Woodland style. We also have a doctor here with us today, Dr. Marty Richardson, that is very fluent in the, style, in the education of the Tudelo language and the, a lot of the trade language that we utilized in Virginia, North Carolina, and the eastern Tennessee, and up and down the eastern seaboard. So I tell you what, it's just great to have all of that education here with us. It's great to have all of that support as we go through our, our livelihoods and teaching our young people. So again, if we have any of our virtual students there, guys, dig into it and dig hard and learn all you can because you never know when you're going to need this here. So we're not going to any further ado. We're not going to hold these guys up. We're going to ask Stony Creek to give us a good exhibition song for our Eastern Woodland Exhibition. Thank you, our Asian Woodland style. We appreciate that, Kaya and Chelsea. Thank you so much for that, their style of dance. Again, wonderful job by our dancers. 
and our singers there. So we'll be coming back to Stony Creek for our final song of this session here, our men's grass dancing. And ladies and gentlemen, I didn't save him for last on purpose. He usually runs the first round of any. If we were back in before occupation of the European nations here, we would be utilizing this young man first because he is known as the preparer of the circle. So this young man would come out, the grass dancers, and he would prepare the circle. He would go out and he'd dance the grasses down to remove any articles and get the arena, or basically get the sacred circle ready for all of our dancers to come out, our elders, our traditional no men and women, and all of our other dancers to dance in any types of ceremonies or dances that we were having during our celebrations. As you look at his regalia here, you see the wonderful, wonderful, beautiful ribbon work that he has here, and it, it, it um, takes and it depicts the grass that they said they danced down, and it takes it and it shows how, as Native people, that they utilize everything, and they would tie stems of grass on this regalia here, and you see a lot of the grass dancers do that, and a lot of them will utilize that, the sweet grass and various ones, to show the style of grass dance that they are. You see the other wonderful beadwork and all the applique work that he's done here with this beautiful regalia and the beadwork that they have and uh, with the lanyards here and coming off of his roach and all of the various items that he has. So as you watch this dance here, watch him as he prepares to circle for the dancers. At this time, Stony Creek Exhibition. Thank you, men's grass. Thank you. Good, good song there by Sony Creek. Thank you, guys. And that will conclude our seventh session here. We have one session left. Session eight will start here very shortly, guys. In about 15 minutes or so, we're coming out to our last session at 245. 245 will be our final session of the day. So, again, we thank you all, our virtual that has attended session seven. Thank you, guys. Thank you, students. Thank you, educators, and thank you, general public, for joining us today at the 25th annual American Indian Heritage Celebration here in Raleigh, North Carolina, at the American, excuse me, at the North Carolina Museum of History. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Here's our session five of our 25th annual 
American Indian Heritage Celebration here in Raleigh, North Carolina at the North Carolina Museum of History. We're here today, guys, just to showcase our dancers and our heritage through song and dance and just share a little bit of our culture here with us today through all of our song and dance. And we thank the museum for offering us this wonderful, wonderful venue to utilize to share our culture this year. During our Native American Indian Heritage Month celebration here for National Native American Heritage Month. So again, thank you for that. We really thank all of our sponsors and all of our singers that came out today, all of our dancers that are helping us out. And for all of you educators and school kids out there and the general public, we thank you for joining us with our virtual programs here this weekend and just enjoying, enjoying the celebration we're having here today. Well, we're going to be bringing out our dancers in a grand entry here. To, just to give you a little idea about our grand entry, all of our celebrations on our Native American culture events, we bring all of our dancers out inside of the grand entry with the beginning of all of our festivities. And during that, we honor and we celebrate all of our veterans, our flags, we honor all of the dancers as they come out, no matter what tribal affiliation that that tribe, that dancer may be, or style of dance. We showcase that dancer during that, inter, excuse me, during that grand entry. So again, ladies and gentlemen, we were going to ask Southern Sun, if they would, to bring all of our dancers out and showcase all of our dancers in our grand entry. Southern Sun, take it away, grand entry. Thank you, dancers. All right, you may be excused at this time. Thank you, all of our dancers here during our grand entry, and we thank our head dancers here with us this weekend, Mr. Patrick Green from the Lumbee Nation and Miss Olivia Richardson from the Halawasa Pony Nation, serving as our two head dancers this weekend. We thank them for that. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be calling out a young man and a young lady here very shortly here. 
to discuss some items here and to showcase a style of dance and the songs known as Escanye. So we're bringing out Mr. Kea Little Turtle from the Lumbee Nation and Miss Chelsea Graham from the Waccamaw Nation. So we're going to be doing some exhibitions here. We'll be turning the mic over to Mr. Kea here shortly to discuss his Escanye. Oh, we'll make sure he's got good communications. Mr. Joel here in the museum doing a wonderful job here with us today. And again, we thank all of our virtual attendees here today. But they're going to be doing some social songs and social dancing and explaining a little bit about what we do as Native people here in the eastern woodlands and uh, eastern style. And again, as I said during some of my previous exhibitions here in the previous sessions, we sure thank these guys for revitalizing and bringing back this style of dance and song, and um, we just um, cannot thank them enough. So to no further ado, I'm going to turn the mic over to Mr. K. Little Turtle. Chwana skana he wagachinedi gane gitre disne wagachinedi nyathwed K. Little Turtle giyathe da wista wis disasete. My name is K. Little Turtle. I'm Snipe Clan, and I come to you from the Lumbia and Tuscarora Nations of North Carolina. Uh, first off, uh, we're going to uh, be showcasing Escanye Ganase, which is New Women's Shuffle Dance. Uh, Miss uh, Chelsea Graham here from the Waccamaw Suwon Wakan Nation over in uh, Buckhead, uh, St. James, North Carolina. Um, she's a, 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 a great powwow dancer and a wonderful long cast dancer, and she's been uh, deep, uh, deeply rooted in her culture from a young age, growing up now into a, a wonderful young, young woman. So this... Uh, this style of dance, the Scania Ganase, it goes back and it, uh, it speaks upon uh, our, uh, our creation story when Sky Woman came down from Sky World and uh, fell onto the snapping turtle's back and she planted those seeds and she did a shuffling dance that spread the earth out. So um, this is a, a, a derivative or, or a, a, version, a version of that dance. So this is sung at, uh, at all of our socials that we have, at our longhouse uh, socials. Um, here down in North Carolina and, of course, up in uh, Six Nations, New York. So this is going to be Escanye Ganase. Uh, 
this last Ascani that we're going to do before we move on to some other uh, social dance um, songs and social dances. Uh, what this song is going to be saying is going to say, Konikwe taskene ga nawi ori waya ori waga ya. And it's saying, um, it seems as though you are well, my relatives, because of the old ways. And um, it's just kind of a song that's, uh, that's reaffirming um, the importance of our, of our languages and the importance of our songs and our dances while we're all going through this, this pandemic. So. So that is Eskanye Ganase. The next uh, set of songs that we're going to be doing is Old Moccasin Dance. We're going to sing a set of Old Moccasin Dance songs. Um, a long, long time ago, it was originally, it was originally the Apple Dance. And um, it was a social dance that was done to celebrate the, the, good, uh, the good harvest of apples. And um, what would happen is it would be a, a test of, of agility. There would be elders or different, uh, different craftspeople, people of, of, of high standing that would observe the dancers, um, the men and the women dancers that was dancing this dance. And, um, and after the, the dance was over, they would choose somebody who they felt like danced really hard during that dance, and they'd give them a new pair of moccasins. Over time, it stopped being referred to, of course, as the apple dance, and it's known as the, um, as the old moccasin uh, dance today. So um, I'm going to share some of these songs while we let uh, Miss Chelsea uh, catch her breath from, from doing those wonderful Escanye steps. <clears throat> Oh, God. 
gaiua, yo ho gaiua, gaiua, e ha yo ho gaiua, e ha yo gaiua, 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 e ha yo ho gaiua, yo ho gaiua, gaiua, e ha yo ho. So that is old moccasin dance. So we do a lot of these longhouse, uh, these longhouse dances back down in Robinson County. I know that um, there is also different longhouse dances that are done amongst the uh, the Wakamasuan, the Wakan people, the Kahari. I know that the Halawasaponi participate also in different longhouse uh, social dancing as well as other things. So. It's good that uh, that we still have these things. That water drum that you saw me uh, singing on, that was our original drum. Uh, long before uh, the powwow drum made its way here, the big drum made its way here in the 60s and 70s with the powwow movement, we were originally uh, water drum people. And what you would see with these different uh, with these different social dances is that we would always go counterclockwise, which is different than what you may have been seeing with the powwow style dancing as they would go clockwise. We started to go clockwise, of course, with the powwow movement. Before that time, the majority of our socials and our ceremonies were done in counterclockwise fashion because uh, we are first and foremost central fire people and um, all, of our, all of our ceremonies and even our socials revolve around that central fire and we would go counterclockwise with our hearts towards the center of the fire. When we would go clockwise, if we would go clockwise during those things, that means that our heart was away from the fire, our heart was away from the center, and it actually means that we would be in mourning, that, uh, that we were upset. So it's important to know these things, and it's, it's good that we have this platform to be able to share our culture and to explain it so that the, uh, the outside world can, can know about it as well. So the next, uh, the next dance that we're going to do is going to be the Robin dance. So um, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good one. It's a pretty fun one. It's got some some beautiful songs. Not to say that I have favorite songs or anything, but Robin dance songs are definitely amongst my amongst my favorite as far as social dance songs go. So we're going to um, deliver these these Robin dance songs for you here all. <coughs> Hey, 
Gani o habe, ya ha ya Gani o habe, Gani o habe, he Gani o habe, o habe, Gani o habe, Gani o habe, he Gani o habe, ya ha. So that was Robin dance. So uh, in closing, one of the things I'd like to say before I, I hand the mic uh, back over to my good brother, J.D. Moore, um, is the importance of, uh, of, your, of your culture in that type of way, your, uh, your specific languages and uh, your songs and your dances. Um, you know, big shout out to the, uh, to the Holowa Saponi Nation and uh, Dr. Marty Richardson with uh, what they've been doing with the Tudelo language. It's been great for their people. And... Uh, I see a lot of our, our different tribes here in North Carolina helping to um, revitalize their, their languages and, and uh, you know, strengthening that up in their community. So in, um, in, uh, in Skarure, what we would say is, uh, which is to keep the good mind. So during this pandemic, I would encourage all of you, uh, to keep that good mind. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it again. Wonderful job. I Miss Chelsea Graham and Mr. K, a little turtle there, and the Escanye and their social and the longhouse dances and songs there and all those eastern woodlands. Again, wonderful job those guys have, have done. And uh, just like, like Kay has said, wonderful job to all of our other tribes and uh, Mr. Dr. Marty Richardson there and working with the Tudelo language and all up and down the east coast here and just doing a wonderful job. So, again, we thank them and just... All that has been contributed to revitalizing this style of dance and this style here in the state of North Carolina, not just here, but in South Carolina, Virginia, Tennessee, and then right on up the coast and into some of the South Carolina regions down around the Catawba Nations and various ones. And I tell you, they do a wonderful job. The Maharian people, excellent job over there. They do with this Escanye and their eastern woodlands also. So, again, that concludes our session five. We'll be going to session six. We'll be starting at 1.15 for session six. We'll be coming back with some additional grand entries and some more exhibitions and for our styles of dance and additional song and additional dance. So, again, anyone that's visiting us virtually, please join us back, and we'll be back live again at 1.15. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and all of our educators, our students are performing their activities virtual, and any of our visiting public here with us on our virtual episodes of our 25th annual American Indian Heritage Celebration here at the North Carolina Museum of History in Raleigh, North Carolina. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for participating here in our final session of today, session number eight, and we'll be showcasing our dancers here today and showing some exhibitions to help to, to spread our culture and to help spread the traditions here as we as Native Americans in North Carolina and all the state-recognized tribes still carry on those many traditions today. So we've asked our drum groups here, wonderful singers here with us today. Southern Sun will be our southern drum group, and Stony Creek is our northern singers for us here today. And those drum groups coming out of the Southern Sun, coming out of Robinson County and the Lumbee Nation there, and then Halawasa Pony is the production of our Halawasa Pony Stony Creek drum group from Hollister, North Carolina. So, ladies and gentlemen, just to explain a little bit about our grand entry before we showcase these dancers, we bring them out at all of our festivals and our powwows and all of our gatherings, and we bring those dancers and we showcase them in their style of dance, no matter what tribal affiliation that they come from, we honor and showcase them. We honor our elders, we honor our youth, and we honor our flags and all of those honoring songs and the veterans that we bring out, and we honor those veterans also inside of that grand entry. But today, for time's sake, we're bringing out our dancers just to showcase them in this grand entry, and we'll have our head dancers, Mr. Patrick Green and Miss Olivia Richardson, bringing us out for our grand entry. So at this time, Southern Sun, if you would, give us the appropriate grand entry song. Yeah. 
Thank you, dancers. Thank you, singers. Men's traditional. Stay with me for a moment here, brother. Yes, sir. All right. Good job to all of our singers, dancers. Thank you, Southern Sun. We'll be moving into our next exhibition here with this young man to my left from the Lumbee Nation here, Mr. Patrick Green. I tell you what, he's a man of many talents, but I tell you, he does a wonderful job of showcasing in this exhibition of men's traditional and living that traditional life and it's good to see him here with us today to show his tradition to share his tradition here we're going to talk a little bit about what he's got with him his regalia and his adornments here and the various things so his style of dance is known as the men's northern traditional it is the oldest style of dance in the americas here for the american indian also known as the war dance and when settlers came over and especially out in the plains areas, they would see us and they would do these, to see these styles of dance. And all up and down the East Coast here and all over, they would see the men dancing and they would say they were claiming to call war. But a lot of times these men were telling stories with their style of dance. They were telling of a hunting party or they were telling of a warring party or a telling of a story from an elder or just a family event. It may have went on. As we as native people, we shared our stories through song. We shared them through dance. And we shared it through our, our verbal speech. And this is one way of showing the tradition and sharing this with his family and with other ones. So today he's going to share this men's traditional. As you see, Mr. Patrick, one of his adornments here, as you see this replica of this shotgun, he probably took this off of a, an enemy during battle or took it off of one during a hunting and utilizes that during hunting. And as you see the bustle as he makes his way and turns and sees the eagle bustle here, the men's traditional eagle bustle, when you see the single bustle, you know you're running up on a men's traditional. And some of the bustles back years ago were a lot smaller and some of the crow bustles that they wore out west and out in the plains areas. But these eastern woodlands and these guys in the America and then up in the northern parts of the men's traditional wore the larger bustles. You see the eagle feathers that he adorns it with, that being the paying tribute and honor to that eagle, the one that flies the highest. And we as native people honor that. 
the beautiful beadwork that he's got here that he has put together. His sister is a wonderful, wonderful artisan, and she does some beautiful beadwork, and I know she has had her hand in many of that that he's wearing today. So again, to no further ado, we're going to ask Stony Creek to give us a good exhibition song from Men's Traditional. Thank you, Mr. Patrick. All right, good job there, Mr. Green from the Lumbee Nation, doing a good job. And I tell you what, that young man there is getting me hungry for some powwows, ready to get back to our celebrations. Hopefully the Creator will allow us to start accompanying those next spring. We'll be looking forward to that. So I tell you what, guys, we'll be bringing out some young ladies here. Our ladies traditional, ladies traditional, make your way out into the arena here, to the stage area in the auditorium. We'll be giving them plenty of room to utilize here today. And I'll be moving on once we finish the discussion here with our ladies traditional. If you would, Miss Rose, we'll get you right there. Lady Jim, we're just working a little bit to make sure that we keep our COVID posture and make sure that we understand our safety protocols here. So as we discuss these young ladies right here and all the ladies traditional as you start, I'll start over here with Miss Heather from the Wakamasuwa Nation. She's wearing the Lady Southern Cloth, Lady Southern Cloth design. And as you see that there is, we traded with the Europeans and we started trading cloth, and especially in the areas that the temperatures were a lot warmer and the humidity levels. So these ladies would wear a lighter weight dress and a lighter weight regalia here during their everyday activities and also at their ceremonies. If we go here to Miss Rose here from the Okanichi Band of the Saponi Nation, she's wearing a more traditional style of the buckskin and the hides, different types of dresses we made from hides. And they would wear those dresses more in the colder areas and up north and the northern areas and around the plains and the very furthest north areas in the eastern woodlands. But a lot of our ladies still utilize that eastern, that buckskin style 
Beautiful, beautiful dress. And we have a dress here with a trademark here with Miss Caitlin Deal. She is Miss Indian, North Carolina, and she is adorned here with her um, pine cone patchwork dress here from the Lumbee Nation, the trademark dress for the Lumbees here in, uh, down in Robinson County. So as you see Miss Caitlin's dress, and one point that I want to point out about her dress, if you look on her apron area there, that you'll see all eight ladies, which represents the eight tribes of North Carolina. And she has one lady representing each tribe in the state of North Carolina that she represents here as Miss Indian North Carolina. So again, we thank her for that and thank her for the story behind this dress and the meaning to show how the tradition and the honor and the respect goes from tribe to tribe inside of North Carolina and all up and down our other tribal affiliations. So thank you for that, Ms. Caitlin. As you see, all these ladies here all have a lot of common items here with them. They have fans in their right hand that you'll see them pay tribute to the drum and pay honor and homage to the drum during the song. Also, you'll see a shawl in the left forearm. And on that shawl, you'll see as it sways in the wind and sways during the dance, keeping beat of the drum. And when those ladies stop on the last beat of the drum, that shawl and their friends will stop so that they are in tune with the beat of Mother Earth. So at this time, we'll ask for a sidestep. They have requested a sidestep from Southern Sun for our ladies' traditional. Take it away, guys. Exhibition. Wonderful job, ladies. Thank you so much. Our ladies, traditional, all of our various styles from our southern cloth to our buckskin to our trademark Lumbee pine cone patchwork. Wonderful job there, ladies. And that song there, good song by Southern Sun. Guys, we'll be bringing out some young ladies here. Our ladies jingle. Ladies jingle, please make your way out into the arena here for our stage and our auditorium. Please come on out, ladies, jingle for your exhibition. Talk a little bit about these ladies here as we're bringing out our head dancer, Miss Olivia Richardson here from the Halawasa Pony Nation, and then my other sister here, I'll get between them, and then from the Kahari Nation, Miss Jessica Newton, and they do a wonderful job, both of them. And I was telling a little story about Jessica, and when I was a younger guy in college, her father was in the military, and we went to powwows in Georgia, where he was at Fort Benning, if I'm not mistaken, and um, down in Georgia there. And uh, the wonderful, and she's still dancing to this day. She was a young lady then, a really, really young lady, and I was a lot younger myself. But um, 
We enjoyed it, and it's good to see her here with us today and her family being represented from the Kahari Nation. And again, our head dancer here with us today, Miss Olivia Richardson, no stranger to the powwow circuits and seen her all my life and her family and her mother and her sisters and all of their family. And they sing with Stony Creek, and I tell you, they do a wonderful job up in Hollister and all around the United States traveling and just, just, just carrying on the heritage and sharing and uh, what they've got in their traditions. But these ladies here want to talk a little bit about their dress here. These, you see the jingles on these ladies' dress here, and you look at these and say, man, what are those made of? Well, those are recycled snuff can lids. These ladies take these lids, and they take them and roll them one at a time, have a special tool to roll that to make that jingle. And then when they're together and they're dancing, it sounds like rain that's coming down, replenishing the earth, and known as the healing dance. So these ladies here, as the story would go, about the young lady up in the Ojibwe nations up around the Great Lakes and down in southern Canada and all those areas there that talked about the healing and talked about how they created this style of dress to come back and bring, bring healing back to the land and to the people. So these ladies here is going to give a good exhibition of the healing dance, also known as the jingle dress dance. Take it away, Stony Creek Exhibition. Thank you there, ladies. Thank you. I appreciate all of that good dancing there from our ladies' jingle. We'll make your way around. We're going to do the run-through, ladies. So, Southern Sun, get ready for our run-through there. We'll be bringing our dancers. And while they're getting ready, we'll tell a little bit about how we're going to close out here today. So, we wanted to showcase all of our dancers in this final episode and run because of the COVID response and our COVID protocols that we have here today. So we're going to bring our dancers out one at a time and run them through and just show a little exhibition, just a few seconds of each one of them style of dance, and then let them exit off the other side. So that way each dancer will get to showcase just a little bit of their dance here and the final song here today for this evolution number eight of our eighth session of this weekend. And I tell you, we are just on um, day one. Tomorrow, we will have this streaming again, and you can get it on the websites here at the Museum of History here. Um, and just look that up, guys, and you can watch these virtual expeditions, excuse me, uh, exhibitions that we did today. You can watch that over again. And we'll be bringing those on. We want to give a big round of applause and and thanks. I wish I had a thousand hands to thanks our Stony Creek singers and our Southern Sun. These guys have done a wonderful job of coming out today and really contributing and giving us some good songs and good singing today. And we sure appreciate that. 
I tell you what, guys and ladies and gentlemen, those that are virtual here with us, and we sure miss you from being here with us this year, but we understand, and we understand the limitations and requirements that we, as not just Native people, but non-Native people, have to do to stay safe. So we thank you for all of that. And please share this with others. And um, we just cannot thank you enough and thank the museum for what they've done. But this is not closing out remarks for me. We're going to be bringing these dancers through. So we're going to brought, we call bringing them through, ladies and gentlemen, showcasing them all. And we'll start with our head dancers, Mr. Patrick Green and Miss Olivia Richardson. We'll be bringing them out. And then I'll talk about all of our dancers as they make their way through. So Southern Sun, give us a good one to bring all of our dancers and showcase them through. Southern Sun, take it away. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's our head dancer, Mr. Patrick Green from the Lumbee Nation. All right, Miss Traditional, take it away, Patrick. Ugh. All right, coming out, ladies and gentlemen, as we hear our coming, our ladies head dancer from the Hollowasa Pony Nation, it's Miss Olivia Richardson. Oh, jingle dress dancing. All right, I see him coming, ladies and gentlemen, our Eastern Woodland Warrior from the Lumbee Nation, Mr. Kaya Little Turtle. Hacha, Take it away, Kaya. Hacha, Our grass dancer, Mr. Richardson from the Halawasa Pony Nation, the prepare of the circle, men's grass. Take it away, Mr. Richardson. Oh, the butterfly dancer from Wakamasuan land, Simone McBride. Take it away, Simone. That's a And from the land of the Kahari, we have Miss Jessica Newton. Take it away, Miss Jessica. Jingle dress lady, healing dancer. Oh, Eastern Woodland, Wakama Suan, Miss Chelsea Graham, Eastern Woodland ladies, Escanye. Social dancing, hoo hoo Also, welcome Suan, Miss Heather Jones, our ladies traditional cloth, lady cloth, Southern cloth traditional, Miss Heather. From the Okanichi Band of the Sapone, Miss Rose coming out, honoring our ladies' buckskin, northern traditional ladies, oh, Okanichi Band of the Sapone. And ladies and gentlemen, our Miss Indian, North Carolina, Miss Caitlin Deal, and our Lumby Pinecone Patchwork, Miss Caitlin, Ladies Traditional.
right. Thank you, dancers. Thank you, Southern Sun. Thank you, Stony Creek. Wonderful job here today, guys. We sure appreciate everything that you have done for us today. And in closing, we want to thank the North Carolina Museum of History, what they have done, the beautiful venue that they have given us here today to share our heritage, to share our culture with Native and non-Native alike, with all of our virtual students, our virtual educators, and the general public. We want to thank our North Carolina Commission of Indian Affairs for all that they do for our United Tribes across the state of North Carolina and all the eight state-recognized tribes that were represented here today, all of our artisans, our craftsmen, everyone, all of our presenters that showed today that come out to share our culture and our 25th annual American Indian Heritage Celebration for our month of November, the National Native American Heritage Month. And again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Be safe and keep the creator first. Oh, ho.